Yeah. All right, yeah. chapter 24. <laughs> has to do with the concept of Gauss's law and electric flux. Electric flux. The symbol for electric flux is a capital P with a subscript of a capital E. And yes, you need it there because eventually we will have also magnetic flux. So this is the electric flux. The electric flux in a constant electric field is equal to capital E times A times a cosine of theta, or if you prefer, the dot product of the electric field and the area. This is true for a constant electric field. Don't worry, we will do one for a non-constant electric field. The dimensions on the electric flux then are equal to what, please? Um, what? Electric field. Michael Young's for a second. Uh, electric field is not that. Travis? <coughs> Times area. Newton meter squared. So Newton meter squared per coulomb are the dimensions for electric flux. Okay, now, E A cosine theta. E is the electric field, A is the area, and theta is the angle between the direction of the electric field and the direction of the area. That's right, the area vector. All areas have a vector. And the area vector is normal to the plane of the area, just like the direction of angular velocity and angular displacement are normal to the plane in which the object is spinning. Exact same thing. Now, the electric flux is essentially a measure of the number of lines that pass through an area. Now, it's an important thing to realize that electric field lines, do they exist in nature? Class, do they exist in nature? No, electric field lines exist so that we can draw and get a, a picture of what the electric field lines look like. And just so you know, the area that we're gonna be talking about is also an area that we just make up so that we can understand what's going on here. So when I say that the electric flux is the number of field lines that passes through an area, realize that we're talking about the number of field lines being something that we made up so that we can understand something passing through an area which we're making up so that we can understand something. So when I say it's the number of electric field lines that pass through an, a certain area, understand that there's nothing really real there. It's just a way for us to understand what electric flux is. There are no field lines. They don't really exist. They're just lines that we draw. And that's one of the things that you guys really enjoy about this section. Here we go. Um, this was done all of that. Okay, so we have an electric field. <laughs> A constant electric field, I did my best, but I'm not very good at it, that is an electric field. When we talk about this electric field, let's take an area that looks like this. So basically, I have some sort of plane, and maybe it's a circle, maybe it's a square, it doesn't really matter at this point, that is oriented like this. If we were to figure out the uh, electric flux, the electric flux in this particular case would be equal to E times A times a cosine of what would be the angle here then? Zach? Zero. zero or 180 degrees. We'll get to whether it's zero or 180 degrees in just a minute. We're not quite there yet. So we'll just put zero for right now, uh, and that's fine. So this has a, um, an electric flux that's equal to E times A. If we take and adjust the orientation of our surface, and we make it so that the surface looks like this. If this is our area, right here, like this, 
the electric flux is equal to E A times the cosine of what angle? What's that? 90 degrees. 90 or? <coughs> 270. 270. Doesn't really matter either way, the cosine of 90 and the cosine of 270 is equal to zero. So notice, when we talk about it as being the number of electric field lines that, I should probably put electric field, the number of electric field lines that pass through an area, there are zero electric field lines that pass through there. So there's zero flux. This is the maximum amount of flux that you could get. And you could also talk about one that would look like this. And then the electric flux would be equal to E A times the cosine of theta, where theta would be defined as the angle located right there. So again, because that's how flux is defined. Because it's normal to the plane of the Earth. Mr. Palmer? Yes? I don't understand how like area can have like like a normal like vector pointing off of it. Like how? Like how can the area have direction? Yeah. Ready? Ready? <laughs> well like... <laughs> okay, let's look at it this way. Eventually, we're going to get to this ring, which is made of metal and has current passing through it, going this way. Okay. Eventually, we will use our right hand and we will determine that there is a vector going this way having to do with that current. Okay. And if we change the current to go the other direction, there will be a vector going the opposite direction. Okay. Just like we have with uh, angular velocity and angular displacement. Right. So, and it, the, the electric flux is defined using that direction. Okay. Right now, I do understand that, that perhaps that area having a direction is not quite as clear, but when we start talking about it moving, it makes a little bit more sense. Okay. True? Makes a lot of sense. 